Right, so, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and first of all, I know it's going to seem a little bit ironic and a little bit strange of me to be talking big about Man City in this video and giving them all the praises in the world whilst wearing a Real Madrid jersey after they've just beaten Real Madrid by four goals to nil in the Champions League semi-final, but I promise you, it was merely just a coincidence, and yeah, I actually just didn't even realise I had this jersey on me until the game kicked off, and by that stage, I'm not just going to go upstairs and f***ing put on a different jersey, I mean, who the f*** does that? But yeah, anyway, um, Man City 4, Real Madrid nil in the Champions League semi-final second leg from the Etihad Stadium and my god it wasn't the empty had today because the atmosphere at City as is usually the case on these European nights these big big European nights to be fair to City it's always a good atmosphere it was absolutely bouncing tonight and Pep Guardiola once again deserves all the credit in the world because this City team they're just absolutely ridiculous and I know everyone and their fucking nans are going to be praising the hell out of this City team and rightly so in my opinion and I'm just going to play my part in terms of just giving my overall thoughts on this City team and this performance overall which which, like I said, was absolutely brilliant once again. 4-0 over arguably the second best team behind Man City in the world in Real Madrid, who, you know, if you look at Real Madrid's team, right, they, it wasn't a team of bums by any stretch of the imagination, right? Courtois and Gold, the best keeper in the world by a stretch, in my opinion, and even still made some very good saves to deny City even making it 6 or 7. Danny Carvajal at right-back, Camavinga at left-back, a Rose Rice, Alaba and Militao, not a pushover at centre-back by any stretch of the imagination, conceded 4 goals to the City team. A midfield of Federico Valverde, Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, Rodrigo on the right, Vinicius Jr. on the left, and Karen Benzema up front. Two Ballon d'Or winners, some world-class players, some future stars, and the best goalkeeper in the world. I mean, the fact that City have come here and won 4-0... It's, it just absolutely blows my mind and look I mean this City team like I said are just absolutely ridiculous and even the stats show that 2.58 expected goals to 0.45 59% possession and I just want to check this right the first half City had 72% possession over Real Madrid I know Real Madrid are not the most free-flowing possession based side when they're playing against a team like Man City away from home especially but I mean the fact that they've got 72% of the ball for a whole entire half of football over this Real Madrid team with those quality players that they have I mean it's just absolutely staggering to be honest and 13 shots in the first half alone they finished the game with 16 six big chances created against Real Madrid especially not even just Real Madrid Real Madrid in the Champions League who we all know are just different gravy and yet they just perform on these, on these Champions League nights they live for these Champions League nights and City have gone and absolutely wiped the floor with them like you would not believe and yet like I said just an absolutely complete performance from Man City overall once again and you know what I'm gonna say it I'm gonna say it this Man City team are probably the best team I've ever witnessed in my life and don't get me wrong I'm only 22 years of age I've still got a lot more football to witness and I was very young when I witnessed that Barcelona team under Pep between 2009 and 2011 and they were absolutely ridiculous but I couldn't really remember that much of them given how young I was and th this is the first team I've actually properly been able to watch on a weekly basis and really consume and take them in and my god they're absolutely f***ing ridiculous I mean the fact that Arsenal this season can finish the season with 87 points to their name and still not even come close really to the Premier League title in terms of the points difference between themselves and City it just shows how good this City team is they're on course for the treble now all they have to do now is win three games of football really even two if Nottingham Forest go and get something from Arsenal at the weekend and look they're, they're going to win the Champions League now let's be honest over Inter Milan barring another Pep Guardiola overthinking session but uh, they're going to win the FA Cup over Man United in my opinion even though that is a tough one given that United have obviously won a Carabao Cup this season and won't be any pushovers under Eric Ten Hag and they are obviously going to win the Premier League now I think it's fair to say it's probably the most nailed on they're going to be for a trophy this season so I've already said City are the best team I've ever witnessed right and I'm going to say it again it might be controversial maybe it's me just being reactionary and just completely you know going over the top with my praise for the City team but Pep Guardiola is the best manager of all time I can't lie and look you can go on about this bullshit of he spent a load of money he spent this that and the other I it just really annoys me the way they completely devalue the stuff that Pep Guardiola has achieved in football by just going on about how much he spent. Man United have spent almost more than this Man City team over the last 10-15 years and look where they are. And the way Pep Guardiola has spent this money and the way City have spent this money, it's not been on the world's best players. It's been on players who, yeah, have potential, but overall, he's turned them into world-class players. Ederson wasn't a world-class player when he joined City. Akanji the same. Ruben Diaz the same. Kyle Walker was probably the same. Jack Grealish was probably the same ability. I think they're the two players you can kind of say he hasn't really massively improved just 
because they were you know decent players when they came in Rodri wasn't world class John Stones wasn't world class De Bruyne you know was decent was a good player but way better now I think it's fair to say the best midfielder I've ever seen in the Premier League history to be fair Bernardo Silva wasn't world class Gundogan was a good player but wasn't world class Haaland you could say was world class but the one exception in the City team to be honest and yeah he just has this City team just playing absolutely silky football in the process as well I mean the football they play is just ridiculous and yeah I'm, I'm just gonna say it Pep Guardiola he's the best manager of all time I know he's bottled Champions League titles with City over the last few years but what this man has done to not only the Premier League but football in general Pep Guardiola is stopping a team that's got 97 points to their name in Liverpool in 2018-19 from winning a Premier League title. Do you understand how ridiculous that is that a team with 97 points in a 38-game season domestic league in one of the toughest leagues in the world cannot come away with the Premier League trophy in their back pocket from that. I mean, it's it's just absolutely staggering. So yeah, maybe I'm going over the top to a certain extent and maybe I'm being slightly reactionary and maybe I wake up tomorrow in the aftermath and the fallout of this and just think I was talking some amount of shit there. But at this moment in time, my mindset tells me that Pep Guardiola is the greatest manager of all time because what he's done with this City team, it cannot be underestimated. And the fact he's changed the system on so many occasions, playing a 3-2-4-1, the first manager really to do so and now been copied by Deserve. Derby, Jurgen Klopp, Mikel Arteta to a certain extent, and he's found a way of taking a City team who were just silky as hell in possession to now being silky as hell and being able to fit an absolute animal in Erling Haaland up front in that. And obviously Haaland, you know, you can say, oh, it's not an e it's not a hard thing to do because Haaland's a striker that's going to score you 40 goals regardless. But the amount of people before this season that were saying that Haaland wouldn't be able to do it in this City team and that he wouldn't suit this City team, Pep Guardiola has found a way to fit Haaland into this City team and my God, is he reaping the benefits of it. And you know what the thing is as well, right? As a Chelsea fan, clearly, as you can see... I think this City team and Pep Guardiola actually raises Thomas Tuchel more, even further, in my estimates than he already was, given the fact that he got the better of this City team on three occasions in 2021, including a Champions League final win in Porto. I mean, Thomas Tuchel, an absolute genius, and just what he's done for this football club alone. And this City team are proven once again how good of how good of a tactician Thomas Tuchel is and how good it was to get it over him in 2021. I know Pep Guardiola overthunk with, you know, overthunk is that a word? I don't know if it's a word, but I'm going to use it. I know he overthought, I think is the word, with not playing Rodri or Fernandinho in that game. And I know he didn't have Haaland, but you've got to be something special, to be honest. And yeah, I mean, Thomas Tuchel goes up in my estimates even further than he even was beforehand, which, you know, really says something. And if you look at this City team, right, we'll go from back to front. Ederson and goal. I mean, I've never seen a more calm goalkeeper in my life and don't think I ever will. I mean, this guy, he could have three players around him within two yards of him and he'll just act like the calmest f***er on the pitch and the calmest f***er in the stadium overall. I don't know how he does it. The back three, Kyle Walker, I mean, other than Aaron Wambasaka maybe, is there a better one-on-one -on -one defender with dealing with an individual left winger because he had Vinicius Jr., one of the best left wingers, if not the best left winger in the world, in his back pocket for 90 minutes. Ruben Diaz, just a solid defender, as good as a defender, as good as, as, good as a natural defender as you're going to see in the world of football right now, an absolute stone-cold leader. Manuel Akanji as well, a free transfer, a player who you wouldn't expect to be starting in the City team, but he's really made his mark in the City team and has looked as solid as ever. Rodri, the best holding midfielder in the world of football, simply put, this guy is just absolutely ridiculous. His stature makes him so imposing, he's just so good at winning the ball back, he makes things tick in the City team and his abilities in possession as well, I mean, they're just absolutely ridiculous and yet Rodri is the most complete and the best holding midfielder in the world of football in my opinion. John Stones, a natural centre back playing as a number six next to Rodri in that double pivot in midfield and yet just making it his own. John Stones, a world class defender in my opinion and now arguably a world-class midfielder as well. I mean, Pep Guardiola has gotten the best out of this guy, and John Stones is one that's massively gone under the radar, in my opinion. And in my opinion, yet yeah, top three centre-backs in the world, absolutely no doubt, in my opinion. Jack Grealish, we were all taking the piss out of him last season. I was one of the only ones that said that Pep Roulette would strike once again this season, and Grealish would step up, and yet yeah, he's been absolutely brilliant. And once again, even though he didn't get a goal or an assist tonight, was absolutely top-notch once again in this City team. Works his socks off out of possession, just glides with the ball overall, very similar to what he was doing under Dean Smith at Aston Villa in his you know prime years so far in his career Gundogan this guy will go down as one of if not the most underrated player of this generation Ilkay Gundogan is a world-class footballer and I will not have it any other way this guy has absolutely everything his experience his football IQ his intelligence and awareness of where to be and then his execution in terms of his passing ability he scores goals he's able to defend he gets around the pitch he covers ground he's just absolutely insane and my god on a free transfer I know it won't happen but if Chelsea Football Club could get this guy in a free transfer I mean I would snap your hand off to get it done Kevin De Bruyne need I say any 
more. I've said that multiple times on this channel in recent weeks, especially. I think he's the best midfielder we have ever seen play in the Premier League in his career. Bernardo Silva, I mean, this guy, I went to, I've gone to see City play a few times against Chelsea, and this guy, I tell you, in terms of footballers who you do not understand how good they are with the ball at their feet until you watch him in person, Bernardo Silva, I mean, he is absolutely ridiculous with the ball at his feet. His control, it's like just sticking the ball to his fucking feet. And yet, got two goals today. was absolutely incredible once again, Bernardo Silva. And again, in my opinion, an extremely underrated player, especially given the fact he's so versatile, can play off the right, can play in the middle as an 8 or as a 10, and works his socks off off the ball for this team as well. Erling Haaland up front, I mean, we don't even need to say anything more about him. I've said enough this season about him. The fact he's got, what, more goals than games in the Premier League, just absolutely unheard of, and it's absolute f in my opinion for anyone to say that this guy is overrated in the slightest I don't care if he doesn't do it in all the big games you're naturally going to get less of the ball and less chances in big games but this guy I mean he's just inhumane let's be honest and that's not even talking about the bench I mean Riyad Mahrez a world class dribbler just a silky footballer Phil Foden the same and just it's got so much potential hasn't even nearly hit his prime yet Phil Foden Julian Alvarez I mean one of the most complete strikers in the world of football right now even behind Erling Haaland I mean it's absolute robbery that he's the, the second choice striker for, for City so to speak. I'm Rick Laporte who doesn't even get a game anymore arguably the best if not the best left footed centre back in the world of football. I mean this City team are just absolutely reckless. I mean yeah they're going to do the treble in my opinion. I would not be surprised if they did it and if they do in my opinion I think it is extremely valid to say that the best team I've ever seen maybe not for you guys because I know there's some of you that you'll obviously have watched you know football a lot longer than I have and you'll be able to you know tell me that there's a lot better teams. There has been a lot better teams like you know AC Milan in the 80s or whatever or you know the Holland team back in the day or that Barcelona team like I said but in my short time watching this sport and I say short it's like what 13 14 years of watching this sport this city team are the best team I've ever seen and they're just the way they control football matches and dominate football matches is it, just like nothing I've ever seen to be honest and yet they deserve all the plaudits in the world and like I said they're going to make it five titles in the last six years in the Premier League which is just unprecedented in the Premier League overall and yeah so yeah that's enough of the arse licking now for Man City and I'll just say one more time even though you do not need me to say it and you probably do not want me to say it but Man City they're just they're just absolutely ridiculous and like I said I've just run out of ways to describe it to be honest and yep I guess that's all there is to be said in this video now with regards to Man City and just how f***ing ridiculous they are so yeah leave a like on the video if you did enjoy subscribe to the channel if you are new we're looking to hit 3,000 subscribers on this channel as soon as we can possibly get there it would be absolutely massively appreciated and uh, yeah turn on that notification bell while you're at it as well because you will not miss any one of these absolutely spectacular videos said no one ever but still do it and yep I guess I'll see you guys in my next video thanks very much for watching and I'll chat to you later.